Hello, science people. It's time for an episode of Storytime with Mr. Bird. Hello, science people. Today, I want to talk to you about Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel is often referred to as the father of genetics. He lived in the mid-1800s in the Austrian Empire, a part of it now known as the Czech Republic. He was a German-speaking scientist. He was also an Augustinian friar. So let's talk about how he discovered genetics and kind of a little background. So during this time in the mid-1800s, people obviously knew that parents would pass on something to their offspring. We knew that children looked like their parents. We knew that farm animals, uh, they would look like their parents. We knew that there was some type of inheritance that would happen with crops and plants. So we knew that there was something with genetics, we just didn't have the word genetics yet, and we didn't know how it worked. And so Father Mendel was very interested in how this inheritance worked. So Father Mendel, in about 1856 to 1863, did a lot of research on pea plants. Yes, so he discovered genetics by using pea plants. At the time, he was a friar and he was in charge of a church and that church had its own fields and he used those fields to grow his peas. So what Father Mendel did was he took these pea plants and then he would cross breed them. Now, pea plants have many different characteristics. They have purple and white flowers. They have yellow and green seeds. They have round seeds. They have wrinkly seeds. Uh, there's tall pea plants, short pea plants. So he was looking at all these characteristics and he wanted to see how they were inherited. And so let's start with what everyone talks about in the textbooks, the purple and white flowers of pea plants. So Father Mendel had these white flowered pea plants and these purple flowered pea plants. And so he started off by cross breeding them. So he took the purple plant and he took the white plant and then he fertilized them, cross fertilized them. The way he did this was he took a little brush, he would take the pollen from the purple flower and then he'd mix it with the white flower. Well, what did he expect? He expected that if you mix the purple and the white, you'd get maybe a light purple flowered offspring, a violet colored offspring, or maybe you would just get half purple, half white. So one of those outcomes is what would be expected. But what happened was unexpected. When he mixed the purple flower with the white flower, he got 100% purple flowered pea plants. So the offspring of the purple and white were 100% purple. Well, what happened to the white? This was what Father Mendel wanted to answer. So 100% purple. So now he took one of those offsprings. So he took one of those and he let it self fertilize. And you can do that with plants. So he took one of these purple offspring pea plants, let it self fertilize, and then looked at the seeds and grew those seeds. So now we're on the third generation. So first generation was a purple and white flower coming together. The second generation was 100% purple. Now we're gonna look at the third generation. Now the third generation had three quarters of the offspring were purple and one quarter were white. The white came back. And so it looked like it skipped a generation. And this is where we get that misconception that some genetics skip a generation. It's not really skipping a generation and we'll talk about it in our video on genetics. So Father Mendel now is looking at this as, I had purple and white together, 100% purple, and now I have 75% purple and 25% white. And so he wanted to figure out what would happen. And so he kept doing these cross breedings. He kept very detailed notes. He kept the math together and he was able to find ratios for different genetics. And then he came up with the words dominant and recessive. What was happening was the purple coloration was dominant and the white coloration was recessive. And so I want to be careful, it's a misconception to say that the dominant overpowers the recessive, which is not really what's happening. And we'll talk about it in the genetics video. But for now, we can kind of say that. So the purple pea plant, the purple coloration was the dominant one that was showing up and the white was the recessive one which wasn't showing up. And so when you brought that purple and white pea plant together, the dominant coloration showed up in 100% of the offspring. But because the third generation had a parent, one parent, that was mixed, part white genetics, part purple genetics, what happened was 
three quarters of them came out purple from that dominant gene, and a quarter of them we'll talk about had two copies of the recessive. So a quarter of them came out white. And so Father Mendel came up with the terms dominant and recessive genetics, which we still use to this day. A lot of times when we talk about dominant genetics or dominant inheritance, a lot of times we'll just call it Mendelian genetics because he was the one that discovered dominant and recessive traits. Now, let's talk a little bit about Father Mendel uh, because it kind of ends in tragedy in a way. Uh, so Father Mendel did his research from 1856 to 1863, he published papers, they weren't very well read, people looked at it not as genetics, but more of talking about crossbreeding crops. That's kind of how they looked at it. Now, people say that or speculate that if Darwin knew about Father Mendel's research on genetics, we would have, as a population, as humans, been much further advanced in our genetic research if Darwin was able to tie in genetics with his research on evolution. But unfortunately, Darwin and Mendel were working at the same time, but had never heard about each other. And so Mendel published these papers, no one really paid attention, and then eventually he took over the church and he had to do a lot more administrative duties in the church, so he stopped his genetics research. Then there was some type of tax problems going on with the church, where uh, whether or not they should pay taxes, and so Father Mendel had to deal with all of that paperwork. And then when Father Mendel finally died, the friar who took over that church to help with the tax situations decided to burn all of Mendel's paperwork because he wanted to get rid of all of it just in case there was issues with the church and taxes. And so it was thought that Father Mendel's research was completely destroyed. Well, it wasn't. It was saved and some of it was published. And it wasn't really until the 1900s, the early 1900s, that people started to look back at Father Mendel's research. And this is when we have a big boom in genetics and discoveries in the early 1900s. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about Father Mendel, Grigor Mendel. And we are going to do another video on what genetics really is. We'll talk about dominant and recessive traits. And so if you want to know how genetics works, check out that video. I'll see you guys next time.